Also, possibly one or two of the other officers will be in court for a hearing today since they have been charged, too. The governor of Minnesota says, quote, it's America's last chance to fix systematic racism following the announcement of additional and elevated charges in the case of George Floyd. So the pressure is on. Spend some time here with the civil rights liability attorney, Mr. Richard Bell. Uh, Richard, I appreciate your time. First of all, good morning. Thank you for inviting me, Bill. The pressure is on prosecutors in this case. Too much pressure? No, because a, a, a good prosecutor, and I, I think uh, uh, Attorney General Ellison uh, seems like an excellent prosecutor, understands that you follow the facts and you follow the law and you proceed with your case. Everything else around it, we understand the societal breaks that are happening in our country, which are heartbreaking at this moment, but the job of the prosecutor is to prosecute. We saw what we saw. Uh, That evidence, I presume, if it gets to trial, a jury is going to see this too. Uh, But correct me if I'm wrong. You can't maybe compare cases, but it's it's tough to get a charge against a police officer to, to, to win something in court at this level? Oh, Bill, that's an excellent point, and I think it's something that the your audience and the public in general is missing right now because Keith Ellison said very carefully, it is very hard to convict police and we cannot assume that the case is won because we have an excellent video. That is true across the board because you have a jury trial and anything can happen. Uh, Is the term qualified immunity at play here? Is that? Okay, so qualified immunity, first of all, it's not at play in the criminal case. That will come in in the family's civil rights case, the type of case that I would handle, which will be uh, long after this criminal case, and that's where they're suing for civil rights violations and wrongful death. So qualified immunity is basically a defense that has been created in the last 40 years by the U.S. Supreme Court, and it protects police officers in these kinds of cases. And what it says is, if you cannot come up with a case of similar facts where the party suing won against the police, then you're going to lose. And doesn't that sound crazy to you? Absolutely. Right. And that is why it has been criticized for 40 years. And Congress uh, is looking at it again now, and the Supreme Court may look at it. And I'll just give you two quick examples of how crazy it is. Okay. In Dallas, uh, five police officers fire 17 shots at a bicyclist. He's 100 yards away. He dies. Turns out it was mistaken identity. Of course, the family sues for the tragedy and the civil rights action. The court says, no, while the Fourth Amendment uh, rights for search and seizure were violated, we can't find a fact pattern like this, so you lose. And the same thing happened in Utah when the police stop a car for a cracked windshield. Officer throws down an unarmed occupant, causes brain damage. Court says, case dismissed. Yes, it was probably an awful search and seizure, but we can't find another case that looks like this. It sounds insane. Richard Bell, civil rights uh, attorney, liability attorney. A couple of other things just to kind of educate ourselves as we watch this process uh, play out. Um, You know, they always say all politics is local. Is all law local? I mean, I know you've got hate crimes, you've got federal things, but in many cases, different communities may go different ways. Oh, yes, very much so. And that's on two levels. Number one, there's a, a, a local jury in Minnesota is going to hear this case. So that's 12 people from the community who hopefully are not coming in without the, coming in without bias, and they're going to make this decision based on the facts. There's possibly a federal civil rights case that's going to be brought by the U.S. government that's being investigated. And then third, you'll have the civil case for lawyers like I do on both civil rights and wrongful death. So the laws do vary wildly, except for the federal laws. But the state laws, yes, they vary wildly. Uh, maybe you can help me, and I want to throw the term racism at you uh, and give you a minute or so. Um, that's in someone's heart. I, I, I'm having a hard time explaining or interviewing or talking to people about 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 legislating it, about laws. It, you just You just can't change people sometimes. Well, here's what you can change, and you're right. Racism lies, in, unfortunately, in someone's heart, and that's a hopefully changes generationally. We're, we're, we're 400 years in, and there have been some very good changes, but obviously look where we are. We have a very, very long way to go. But what you can do with the law is make some structural changes that no longer favor the police against mostly 
African-American men in these situations and make some laws, whether it's uh, getting rid of this qualified immunity so it makes it more reasonable to be able to sue or to have federal police standards or outlaw chokeholds. You see, every time we structurally chip away and allow the law to work fairly and equitably, we, we chopped away at a little piece of the racism so at least the law can get its job done which we haven't done for a very long time well said civil rights liability attorney uh, richard bell good analysis i really appreciate your time this morning thanks much my pleasure thank you so much uh, richard bellesq.com thank you 758